To keep yourself updated, subscribe to Indigo Learn and click the bell icon. My dear friends, now let's spend some good time on discussion about RTP November 2019, which is really important for every student to look at it because RTP is one such paper which will give two insights wherein the benefit number one is all about trying to get a feel and the pattern of exam, how questions will be framed in the exam and to get that examination approach. And the second interesting point to be noted is about lot of times we keep observing that questions will come straight away in the exam which is directly picked up from RTP into our exam. So let's take some time and effort to look at our RTP and understand exactly what kind of questions are being asked. First, if you look at RTP number 2019, first we have got some MCQs which we need to discuss. After that, we'll talk about some more interesting questions there. First, question number one. Miss Raksha is engaged in providing private coaching services in Noida, Uttar Pradesh and it's not registered under GST till 25th September. Her aggregate turnover is 19 lakhs on 30th September. She got registration done on 30th September. Which of the following options are available to him? Sir, if you observe very clearly, sir, whenever you solve any MCQ, it's always important that you understand that question very clearly before you look at the options. First, if you observe, there is a lady known as what? Raksha. She is not registered till 25th September and her aggregate turnover is clearly given in the question is 19 lakhs on 30th September and after that she got registration done she got registration done on 30th September friends we all know the point that registration is generally mandatory only when aggregate turnover exceeds 20 lakhs certain special cases we have the concept of 40 lakhs and 10 lakhs now they're asking in the question which of the following options are available to her so it's really important we look at the options very clearly come on option number one she can pay tax at 18 percent charge it from customer and avail full input tax credit on the procurement made fantastic that option is always there she'll pay tax at normal rate and she can happily take input tax credit that's a very valid option option b she can pay tax at the rate of six percent under exemption scheme for service provider but she cannot charge GST from customer and also cannot avail input tax credit. Even that is very valid point, my dear friends, because we all know that latest scheme which has come up, which clearly says that if last year turnover does not exceed 50 lakhs, then current year we can opt for the notification and we will pay tax only at the rate of 6%. But that 6% we cannot collect from customer. We have to pay from the pocket. Next, option C. She is not liable for registration since her aggregate turnover is less than 40 lakhs. Friends, the 40 lakh story will not come here because she is in Noida or in UP. The 40 lakhs is will come only in a case where a person is engaged in supply of only goods. But in the question, she is engaged in providing private coaching services. The question of 40 lakhs will not arise. The limit will come only in the case of goods. And in the given case, since it is services, it's definitely going to become 20 lakhs limit only. And moreover, once she has taken voluntary registration, then all provisions of the act will apply. And option D is given either A or B. So definitely my answer is going to become option D because we have got two options. Option one, go for 18%, take input tax credit. Option two, you can go for 6% and pay the tax from pocket. And of course, you cannot take input tax credit. So both the options are valid. So answer is going to become option D. So friends, let's look at the next MCQ. Mr. Arun, a registered supplier, is engaged in selling sweets. The sweets are sold in boxes and the cost of each sweet box is 500 rupees. In order to increase turnover, he purchased certain juice cans at 20 rupees each and added juice can with every sweet box as a gift. Sweet box along with free juice can is sold at 500 rupees each. So friends, if you observe very clearly here, in the question, they clearly told that the sweets are sold at a cost of what? Sweets are sold at a cost of 500 rupees, right? And to increase the turnover, what has happened? He purchased juice cans 
and what is the value of juice cans? 20 rupees. And he added this juice cans along with every sweet box as a gift. And sweet box along with juice can is sold as 500 rupees each. That means they both are given together. Those two are given together at a time. Now, which of the following statement is correct? Number one, he is liable to pay tax on 520 and eligible to claim ITC on juice cans. That is definitely not a correct answer because your value of supply is only 500 rupees. Then why would we pay GST on 520? Second bit, he is liable to pay tax on 500 and not eligible to claim input tax credit on purchase of juice cans. That need not be the case here. Here there is a case where juice cans we can take credit because it's something like we are giving it along with the product as a free. We are not giving it as a free sample as such. We are giving it as a free item. So definitely my dear friends, as per the latest understanding of the GST law, it's very very clear point that when something is given, generally we find some shops buy one get one free offer. Whenever they give something like that, still they can claim input tax credit. It's something like two are given at a single price. And option C, he is liable to pay tax on 500 and also eligible to claim input tax credit on purchase of juice can. Option D, either A or B. So definitely my answer is option C, that he is liable to pay tax only on 500 and on this 20, he can definitely claim input tax credit. Now my dear friends, let's look at the third MCQ. Come on. Which is not considered as supply under GST law? They gave four points and they're asking which is not considered as supply under GST law. Number one, stock transferred from one establishment in Delhi to another establishment in Gurgaon, Haryana, reached under the same pan. Friends, if you recall it, we had a concept of something known as distinct persons. Supply between distinct or related persons in the course or furtherance of business. That is definitely called as supply. And in the question they asked, which is not a supply? So this option is not correct. Then CA Ram supplies accounting services to CA Radha in lieu of taxation services received from Radha. That's a clear case of exchange of services, which is also called as a supply. Third option. Health club supplies lunch to its members at its annual general meeting against a nominal charge. Whether it is a nominal charge, whatever charge, still it is called as a supply. Option D, Mr. A sells a flat to B and it's given that date of completion certificate is 31st Jan and date of agreement is 1st of February. Consideration is received on 5th of February. Friends, in this transaction, if you recollect, we learned some concept called construction services. We call it as supply. However, if entire consideration is received after completion certificate, then the transaction shall not be regarded as supply. So definitely in this case, the option turns out to be option D which is going to be the answer for which is not a supply. Next, question number four, with reference to provisions relating to transaction value under section 15 of CGST Act, which of the following is not correct? They are asking which is not correct. First one, central excise duty will not be included in the transaction value for supply of tobacco. Why would we not include that, my dear friends? Definitely will include. In fact, we already learned some section called 15.2a, which clearly says all taxes, duties, says fee charged by supplier from recipient shall form part of value of supply. Anyways, let's look at other options also. Option B, municipal tax paid by tenant will be included in the transaction value for supply of renting of service. Perfect. Entertainment tax included in movie ticket will form part of transaction value. Fantastic. Customer makes payment of right, which is payable by supplier directly to service provider. However, supplier does not include this amount in the invoice. Such amount will be included in the transaction value of supplier. Yes, of course, 15 to B, supplier's obligation in relation to value of supply, which will be included in the transaction value. So option B, C, D, all are correct. So what is not correct is only option A. So fourth question, my answer turns out to be option A. Next guys, come on. Without delay, let's look at multiple choice question number five. Which of the following services are notified under section 93 
or section 53 of IGST Act, the tax on which shall be paid on reverse charge basis by recipient of supply. Come on guys, if you recollect my difference, 93 talks about services which are covered under notified RCM. So they have got some list of notified services which are covered under RCM. Come on friends, first point, first option, supply of security services provided by a person other than body corporate to a composition taxpayer. Sir, we discussed this point that security services provided by any person other than body corporates, security services provided by any person other than body corporate to a registered person. What services, guys? Security services provided by any person other than body corporate to a registered person this transaction is covered in RCM but the provisions of RCM will not apply if recipient is registered under a composition scheme. In first A option since the person registered in composition scheme RCM provisions will not apply. Option B. Services supplied by insurance agent to insurance company. This is definitely covered in RCM. Option C. Supply of services by way of renting of hotel accommodation through e-commerce operator. This is no way covered in RCM. This concept is dealt by section 9.5, not by 9.3. Next, supply of notified categories of goods or services or both by a supplier who is not registered to a specified class of registered person. That is a case where supplier is unregistered, receiver is registered. The fact is that is also covered in RCM but that concept is not dealt by 9.3 but it is dealt only by section 9.4. So in this particular context option number 2 that is services by insurance agent to insurance company that itself is only the transaction which is covered in RCM. So if you look at the options option A 1 and 2, option B only 2, option C 1, 2, 3, option D 1 and 4. So the best option which is actually the correct answer is nothing but option B that is only second one that is insurance agent to an insurance company. This is the only transaction which is covered under RCM. So friends come on now let's look at 6th MCQ come on. Comfortable Private Limited is registered under GST in the state of Orissa. It is engaged in the business of manufacturing iron and steel products. It has received IT engineering services from Hi-Fi Infotech Private Limited for 11 lakh rupees excluding GST on 28th October. Come on. So let's take the facts now. 28th October what has happened? They have received right then 5th November invoice for services rendered was issued on 5th of November and they have also given that Comfortable Private Limited has made part payment of 4 lakh 20 thousand on 30th November. Being unhappy with the service provided by Hi-Fi Infotech Private Limited, it did not make the balance payment. Deficiency in service rendered was made good by Hi-Fi Infotech Private Limited on 15th February XY, that means next year. And Comfortable Private Limited has made payment of 3 lakhs on 15th February XY. And the balance payment is made on 6th of June that is after 180 days from date of issue of invoice. Input tax credit available in respect of IT engineering services received from Hi-Fi in the financial year 2000XX to XY. This is what is the question they are asking. Now friends if you recollect we learned some concept in section 16 where we clearly discussed that in order to avail input tax credit there were some conditions which need to be satisfied and apart from those conditions we have learned some extra important concept that recipient must make payment to the supplier within 180 days from the date of invoice. If payment is not made to supplier within 180 days from date of invoice whatever input tax credit is availed that will be reversed or shall be added to the output tax liability but that will happen after 180 days is over. If you observe here 6th June they made the payment that is after 180 days from date of invoice and invoice date if you observe invoice date is nothing but 5th of November. If it is 5th of November starting definitely we would enjoy the credit and take the credit just that after 180 days 
only will reverse the credit or add it to output tax liability. So for current year, definitely we can take credit on entire 11 lakhs, which turns out to 11 lakhs into 18%, which comes to 1,98,000. And in options, it is given as option A, 1,98,000, option B, nil, option C, 64,068, option D, 1,908,031. And my answer is turned out to be option A, which is nothing but 1,98,000. In the current year, I will take credit for full value. But subsequently, after 180 days, that proportionately, I'll reverse the credit or add it to the output tax liability. But as of now, definitely I can take full credit. Next guys, MCQ number 7, come on. Mr. Dev Anand is engaged in providing services of facilitating sale and purchase of securities to various clients. He is also engaged in trading of securities. His turnover details are as follows. Trading of securities 40 lakhs. Brokerage on account of facilitating transaction in securities 30 lakhs. You are required to ascertain aggregate turnover. Friends, if you recollect, we learned the concept of definition of goods under 252 which clearly says goods cover every movable property other than money and securities but includes actionable claim. Again in 2.102 we discussed the definition of service which clearly says anything other than goods, money and securities. So securities will not fall in definition of goods, will not fall in definition of service. So that will never be considered for GST purpose. However, it is important to know that, it is important to note that services of Facilitating transaction in securities shall be subject to GST. So in the same manner, in the given question, trading in securities is 40 lakhs. On that, we are not required to pay GST. It will never form part of our turnover. Second, brokerage on account of facilitating transaction in securities on that GST will apply. So accordingly, so accordingly, my aggregate turnover turns out to be 30 lakhs. So on options given are 30 lakhs, 40 lakhs, 70 lakhs nil so my answer turns out to be 30 lakhs because we are not going to pay gst on trading in securities but we are definitely required to pay gst on brokerage on account of facilitating transactions in securities next question number eight mr Papu singh commenced his business in february he established following units it's a very interesting question guys come on he established unit A, which is in SCZ, unit B, which is in non-SCZ, and these two are in Maharashtra, and unit C is in Delhi, D and E are in Goa. Perfect. See the question now. Mr. Papu Singh has approached you to help him in determining the states and number of registrations he is required to take under GST law, presuming the fact that he is making taxable supply from each state and his aggregate amount exceeds the threshold limit. Friends, if you all recollect, we discuss an interesting concept there, which is very clearly given in the law that in case of separate state, separate registration is mandatory. And for a CZ unit also, we should mandatorily take separate registration. But if it is not a CZ unit, it's a normal unit for which we have got multiple places of business in a single state, then separate registration is not mandatory, it's only optional. So if you observe, for unit A and unit B in Maharashtra, definitely I should take two registration. Delhi, I should take one registration. In Goa, I may take either one or I may take either two. Choice is mine. So if we get the options, come on. Option 1, Maharashtra 2, Delhi 1, Goa, optional 1 or 2, fantastic. Option B, Maharashtra optional 1 or 2, Delhi 1, Goa optional 1 or 2. Option C, Maharashtra 1, Delhi 1, Goa 1. Option D, Maharashtra 2, Delhi 1, Goa 2. That is definitely not an option. So my answer is option A, wherein for Maharashtra, I should definitely take separate registration because one unit is an SCZ. For Delhi, different states separate mandatorily. For Goa, when I've got two units, either I can take two registration or I can continue with one registration. So answer is option A. Moving forward, guys. Question number nine. A non-resident taxable person 
nothing but NRTP. Guys, we discuss the story of CTP, NRTP. Come on, look at the question. A NRTP is required to apply for registration within how much time they are asking. They gave options. Option 1, 30 days from the date on which you become liable for registration. 60 days from the date on which you become liable for registration. At least 5 days prior to commencement of business. Last option, none of the above. So definitely my dear friends, the answer is at least 5 days prior to commencement of business. Nothing but option C. Something what we already discussed so many times. Dealt with section 27, read with section 25. Wherein section 27 talks about the concept of CTP and RTP. 25 talks about procedure for registration. In exam, you are not required to give the reasoning, but you should know the reason. That is why I am discussing the reason with you. Next. Question number 10. Which of the following activity shall be treated neither as a supply of goods nor as supply of service? It is neither a supply of goods nor a supply of service. That means it is dealt with what my dear friends? Section 7 to A read with which schedule? Schedule number 3. That is what talks about the concept. Come on. What are the options we have? Permanent transfer of business asset where ITC is available that is covered in schedule 1. Temporary transfer of property that is covered in schedule 2. Transportation of deceased that is definitely covered in schedule 3. Next, services by employee to employer in the course of employment that is also neither regarded as supply of goods nor regarded as supply of service. So if you observe my third point and fourth point are covered in the transaction which are neither regarded as supply of goods nor regarded as supply of service and my options given are 1 and 3, 2 and 4, 1 and 2, 3 and 4 but definitely my answer is option D because it is 3 and 4 nothing but transportation of deceased service by employee to employer in the course of employment so these are the various MCQs which are given in our RTP now let's move to further questions apart from MCQs given in RTP. So friends, we are done with discussion about the concept of MCQs. Now let's start looking at the questions what we have. Now, question number 11. Examine whether supplier is liable to be registered in the following independent cases. So before we look at that, my dear friends, we all recollect the concept called we have got four states, Manipur, Mizoram, Nagaland, Tripura, where the limit is nothing but 10 lakhs if you are engaged in goods or in service or in both still the limit is 10 lakhs only another category we have got a concept of Arunachal Pradesh, Meghalaya, Sikkim, Uttarakhand, Puducherry and Telangana where the limit is 20 lakhs if you are engaged only in goods or only in service or in both still the answer is 20 lakhs only or the states if you are only engaged in goods then the limit is 40 lakhs only in service the limit is 20 lakhs both the limit is 20 lakhs so all these points should immediately strike our brain the moment we talk about the aggregate turnover limits so that we can understand the question in the most easiest possible manner. Now look at that. First bit. Raghav of Assam is exclusively engaged in intrastate taxable supply of ready-made garments. His turnover in the current financial year from Assam showroom is 28 lakhs. He has got another showroom in Tripura with turnover of 11 lakhs in current financial year. Friends, if you observe the question very clearly, sir. What is the language used there? He has got one showroom in Assam also, one showroom in Tripura also. Assam, what is the turnover? 28 lakhs. Actually speaking, Assam has got a limit of 40 lakhs. But the problem is, Tripura, there is a turnover of 11 lakhs. Total put together actually is only... 39 lakhs but still the registration is required because Tripura is covered under the story of special category states and once we have got taxable supplies in special category states the limit for registration shall only be 10 lakhs and registration becomes mandatory next bit Pulkit of Panjim Goa is exclusively engaged in intrastate taxable supply of shoes and his aggregate turnover is 22 lakhs Obviously, registration is not required because his aggregate turnover does not exceed 40 lakhs and is engaged only in supply of goods that to intrastate. Third bit, Harshit of Himachal Pradesh. Sir, Himachal Pradesh guys 
ఇప్పుడు హిమాచల్ ప్రదేశ్ దట్ ఈస్ ఆల్సో ఇన్ ఫార్టీ ల్యాక్స్ స్టోరీ ఓన్లీ కరెక్ట్ బట్ ప్రొవైడ్ యూఆర్ ఓన్లీ ఎంగేజ్ ఇన్ గుడ్స్ సి దట్ హర్షుద్ ఆఫ్ హిమాచల్ ప్రదేశ్ ఈజ్ ఎక్స్క్లూజివ్లీ ఎంగేజ్ ఇంట్రస్టేట్ సప్లై ఆఫ్ పాన్ మసాలా ఇంట్రాస్టేట్ సప్లై ఐ రిపీట్ వన్ మోర్ టైమ్ ఐ రిపీట్ వన్ మోర్ టైమ్ హర్షద్ ఆఫ్ హిమాచల్ ప్రదేశ్ ఈజ్ ఎక్స్క్లూజివ్లీ ఎంగేజ్ ఇన్ ఇంట్రాస్టేట్ సప్లై ఆఫ్ పాన్ మసాలా హీస్ అగ్రిగేట్ టర్న్ ఓవర్ ఇన్ ద కరెంట్ ఫైనాన్షియల్ ఇయర్ ఇస్ ట్వంటీ ఫోర్ ల్యాక్స్ వెర్ ఇట్ ఇస్ ట్వంటీ ఫోర్ ల్యాక్స్ రిజిస్ట్రేషన్ బికమ్స్ మ్యాండేటరీ బికాస్ ద లిమిట్ ఆఫ్ ఫార్టీ ల్యాక్స్ విల్ నాట్ అప్లై ఫార్ పాన్ మసాలా టొబాకో టొబాకో సబ్స్టిట్యూట్స్ ఐస్ క్రీమ్ అండ్ అదర్ ఎడబుల్ ఐస్ whether or not containing cocoa that's where registration becomes mandatory next bit ankit of assam is exclusively engaged in interstate supply of taxable services his aggregate turnover is 25 lakhs once 25 lakhs registration becomes mandatory since aggregate turnover exceeds 20 lakhs so it is very important point to keep in mind and write an exam very properly is that the limit of 40 lakhs will come if you are engaged exclusively in supply of goods in that states next sanchit of assam is engaged in interstate supply of both taxable goods and services his aggregate turnover is 30 lakhs registration again becomes mandatory because aggregate turnover exceeds 20 lakhs 40 lakhs limit will apply if they are engaged exclusively in supply of goods next guys come on question number 12 mr ajay has a registered repair center where electronic goods are repaired or serviced his repair center is located in the state of rajasthan and he is not engaged in making any interstate supply of services fantastic his aggregate turnover in the preceding financial year is only 45 lakhs so if you observe what is the preceding financial year turnover is nothing but 45 lakhs with reference to provision of cgst act examine whether ajay can opt for composition scheme in the current financial year he is eligible to avail the benefit of concessional payment of tax under notification number 2 by 2019 ct are dated 7 3 2019 considering the option of payment of tax available to ajay compute the amount of tax payable by him assuming that his aggregate turnover in the current financial year is 35 lakhs will your answer be different if ajay procures few items required for providing repair services from neighboring state of madhya pradesh friends first fundamental important point the concept of composition scheme is dealt by one wonderful section called section 10 but one very important point to be noted is that composition scheme will apply only when aggregate turnover during preceding financial year does not exceed 1.5 crores and in some states we have a concept of 75 lakhs basically special category states other than 2 3 states so in that case limits will apply and we can opt for composition scheme but the problem is a service provider cannot opt for composition scheme in the given case if you observe he is a repair service center so he cannot opt for composition scheme however my dear friends since aggregate turnover in the preceding financial year does not exceed 45 lakhs he can claim the benefit of that notification number 2 by 2019 and current year he can directly pay tax at the rate of 6% on 35 lakhs he will calculate 6% which comes to 2 lakh 10000 that is what he will pay and they ask one more point in the question will your answer be different if we if ajay procures few items required for repairing from neighboring states my answer will not have any impact even though we procure from neighboring states because notification or in composition scheme we have got a point which specifies that he should not be engaged in interstate outward supply but they never spoke about interstate inward supply interstate inward supply that is never and ever prohibited by the law next guys now let's look at question number 13 now advice regarding availability of input tax credit under cgst act in the following independent cases we all know that in input tax credit some good number of amendments have been done so let's look at that very clearly first one amt company limited purchased a minibus having a seating capacity of 16 persons for transportation of its employees from their residence to office and back Come on guys, 13th first bit, can they claim ITC? 
definitely ITC is allowed because we all know that ITC is not allowed only in case of motor vehicle for transportation of persons having approved seating capacity of not more than 13 persons including driver in that case only credit is not allowed so in this case happily I can take credit next Bangur Ceramics Limited a manufacturing company purchased two trucks for transportation of its finished goods from factory to dealers located in various locations within the country if it is for transportation of goods definitely credit is allowed credit is always blocked only when it comes to transportation of persons that too in special cases third bit hans premium dealing in luxury cars in chanakya puri delhi purchased five skoda vrs cars for sale to the customer so basically they have procured cars for making a further supply so 100 percent itc is allowed in fact my dear friends these all concept is coming from section 17.5 clause a fourth bit sun and moon packers private limited has availed outdoor catering services to run a canteen in its factory and the factories act requires the company to set up a canteen in its factory we have one point called on food and beverages we can't take credit but if employer provides it to employee on account of a statutory obligation then credit is allowed credit is what my dear friends allowed and this concept is dealt by section 17 5 clause b so friends let's look at the 14th question now flow pro sold a machine to bp private limited and it provides the following particulars price of the machine excluding taxes and incidental charges is 30,000 machine was subject to third party inspection the inspection charges have been directly paid by BP limited to the testing agency that is 5,000 freight charges for delivery of machine and flow pro has agreed to deliver the goods at BP limited's premises and the figure is 2,000 subsidy received from state government on account of sale of machine under a skill development program subsidy is directly linked to the price and the figure is 5000 next discount of 2% is offered to BP limited on the price and record in the invoice items given in serial number 2 to 5 have not been considered in price at serial number 1 so determine value of supply come on guys if we start executing the problem what is the price of machine originally sir 30,000 but that 30,000 is the basic price but if you observe there is a subsidy which is coming from central government or state government if you know if you recollect the concept guys we have something called 15 to e which specifies that any subsidy linked to the price shall form part of value of supply except subsidy from central government or state government so in this case subsidy is coming from whom state government so should that form part of value of supply answer is no so what we will do is from 30,000 we will reduce 5,000 and I will take the figure of only 25,000 then inspection charges definitely we will add freight charges definitely will include total figure is now how much my dear friends 32,000 and I'll reduce discount because of 15.3a. It's nothing but 2% on price. 2% of price is how much? 2% of 30,000 comes to 600. So my balance answer comes out to 31,400, which becomes my value of supply. That is the answer for value of supply. But friends, please make sure that whenever you solve problem on value of supply please make sure that you write very clearly the note as per which reason and for what reason you are including that for example in the freight charges we are including that because it's like a composite supply and in case of incidental charges we include that because of 15 to c and in case of inspection charges we include that because of 15 to b suppliers obligation in relation to supply met by recipient so please make sure that you write a note in the exam only then we can expect full marks in the exam come on friends now let's look at the next question 
and the next question is based on our exempt services come on let's look at that state with reasons whether gst is payable in the following independent cases number one services provided to recognize sports body as a curator of national team 100 percent this service will not be exempt because we all recollect the concept that services provided to recognize sports body is exempt by only a player empire referee coach or team manager but here they are talking about curator so that service will not be exempt second bit service provided by transportation of passenger in a metered cab in case of auto rickshaws metered cabs and all that service is definitely exempt metro monorail they are all exempt next services by way of public conveniences such as provision of facilities of washrooms friends we all know that public convenience such public conveniences such as provision of facilities of washroom bathroom lavatories urinals and toilets that service is exempt finally fourth bit services provided by player to a franchisee which is not a recognized sports body if a service is given by player empire referee coach or team manager to a recognized sports body then only that service is exempt if it is not given to a recognized sports body then that service will definitely become taxable friends come on let's look at the next question guys come on question number 16 mac sons is a registered supplier of electronic items so basically goods and pays gst under regular scheme on 15th july mac sons received an order from sundar trader for supply of a consignment of electronic items Mac Sons get the consignment ready by 20th July. Invoice was issued the next day, that is 21st of July. Sundar Trader could not collect the consignment immediately. And Sundar Trader collects the consignment from premises of Mac on 30th July and hands over the check towards payment on same date. Payment is entered in the books of accounts on 31st July and created to the bank account on 1st of August. You are required to determine time of supply of the electronic items. Friends, if you recollect the concept of time of supply in case of goods in general is dealt by section 12.2, where the concept earlier was date of invoice, date of payment, whichever is earlier. This was the answer earlier. But now, after notification number 66 by 2017, what has happened is directly answer became date of invoice and date of invoice is nothing but date when date when invoice is actually issued or date when invoice is ought to have been issued under section 31 whichever is earlier friends one interesting point is that in case where there is a movement of goods as per section 31 invoice must be issued on or before date of removal if you observe here the goods are ready and the goods are actually moved on moved out from the premises on 30th to july invoice is supposed to be given on 30th july but actual date of invoice is nothing but 21st of july so straight away my time of supply becomes 21st of july and date of payment is of no relevance after the concept of notification number 66 by 2017 wherein time of supply is directly date of invoice wherein date of invoice means actual date of invoice or last day when invoice is ought to have been issued under section 31 whichever is earlier come on guys moving ahead next question number 17 abc limited a registered supplier has made following taxable supplies to its customer p and they are given date bill number particulars of some goods and the invoice value 5th april bill number is given notebooks standing numbers 1200 then chart papers crayon colors poster colors and then pencil boxes like this different different goods are given on different different dates with different different invoice amounts below they are asking goods in respect of bill number 102 230 and 254 have been returned by mr p you are required to advise abc limited whether it can issue consolidated credit note against all the three invoices friends let me tell you now as per section 34 in case where goods are returned 
or the value of supply is reduced for any reason then supplier can definitely issue a document known as credit notes once upon a time there was a concept which said that credit notes should be given for every invoice separately but now amendment has been done which clearly specifies that consolidated credit note can be given in respect of one or more invoices together so there is no requirement to give separate credit notes so there is definitely a possibility to give consolidated credit notes so friends now let's look at the last question of our rtp november 2019 that is our question number 18 come on x a supplier of goods pays gst under regular scheme amount of itc on account available amount of itc available and output tax liability under different tax heads is as under igst output is 2000 input is 4000 cgst output is 800 input is 2000 sgst output is 2500 input is 500 compute the minimum gst payable in cash by x making suitable assumptions friends the fundamental important amendment which you should recollect is that igst credit to be first use it for igst second you can use it for cgst or sgst in any order cgst credit will use it for cgst then for igst sgst credit will use it first for sgst then for igst and one more very important point we need to keep in mind is that credit of cgst and sgst to be utilized only after igst is fully exhausted come on guys if i look at my figures of igst cgst sgst what is my output tax guys igst is 2000 cg is 800 sg is 2500 boss so when i have got my credit i have got a credit of 4000 of igst i have got igst i, I credit of 4000 i'll better utilize 2000 towards igst and i'll directly use 2000 towards sgst student can ask so why you did not use for cgst because that is what is my optimum utilization i have to keep in mind one important concept that cgst credit i can't use it for sgst sgst credit i can't use it for cgst so i have to utilize my credit in the most optimum possible manner next cgst input what the figure i have 2000 i'll utilize 800 correct no my dear friends next sgst input what are the figure i have 500 i'll utilize 500 net of it my tax liability and igst becomes nil cgst becomes nil sgst also becomes nil this is how you have to make optimum utilization of your input tax credit available so friends i am sure you will definitely get some inputs out of this understanding of rtp november 19 and execute really well in the exam wish you all success all the very best my dear friends do really well in the exam thank you